This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi. Today we're bringing an episode of Power Gears where we always talk about training and lifting shoes. I promised you earlier this week on either one of my videos or on Instagram, I'm bringing you why the Metcon is so amazing. And one of the big problems people have with the Nike Metcon is that it potentially can be squeaky. And that's because it does use a midsole. What a midsole is means this shoe with nothing in it it is literally just a shell. You have the outside, you have the upper, and you have all the cushion right here. So it's not actually an insole. So this does two things. One, if you normally need an insole for arch support or additional uh, medical reasons or just the way your foot is shaped, uh, you probably want to lean towards an other shoe. If you are generally good with a regular shoe, you don't really get an insole, the Medicon is awesome. And if you're complaining about the squeakiness, you can always put a little baby powder in there. But the magic behind the midsole is that you can replace it. So if you have older Metcons, if you're buying a newer Metcon, let me go over the differences. All right, the regular Metcon comes with a pretty thin, uh, very dense overall midsole. What that gives you is a very solid feel throughout, uh, very stable. Uh, it doesn't compress too much. So when you are doing deadlifts and heavy lifts, you do feel very planted. It does give you a decent heel cup in here. So you do feel very secure overall. If you notice, there's not that many flex grooves. Now this is from the Metcon 2, uh, the Metcon 3 that came out. Uh, that one has a little bit more flex through so that it does eliminate some of the squeaking, but obviously there is some there. But overall, same over midsole. Now, if you're looking at the Metcon DSX, Nike started using something with a lot more flex. You can see the grooves there right in the middle. It's something that allows you to run a little bit easier just because a lot more motion to it. They use a slightly thicker heel, so it is a little bit more cushioned. Now here's the thing, it's actually the same material, same density. So even though you're getting a little bit more, you're not really losing too much down stability. So that's why with the Medcon DSX Flynet, it's something that is more apropos for running, jumping, you can move around, but you're still getting the overall stability. So I don't think you're losing too much by spending a little bit more and going to the Flynet version. Now the beauty comes with not only being able to switch these out, but if you have an older Medcon and you get a newer one, you can mix and match those. As your Metcon gets older, your wear and tear is really going to happen around your rope climbing areas, uh, potentially uh, box jumps kind of fraying in the front, and or if you do start to wear out the outsole. But that insole does start to actually uh, form to your foot and even if it becomes more dense now you have something that's even more firm for say deadlifts or heavy lifting so either way you're okay now the beauty comes when you get a new one you can now use that in your older shoe your newer shoe or what i recommend is getting some things other in nike's lineup that use midsoles so something you can buy right now to mix up your shoe lineup if you do have some nike metcons for training is going to be one of the kobe shoes, either Instinct, uh, they have the Kobe, Kobe Mamba mentality. These shoes are meant for outdoor basketball. You can get them in a ton of different colorways. So this I was able to pick up on Nike clearance for like 50 bucks. But the beauty of this is it comes with a lunar insole. What that means is one, it's thicker. Two, it's a lot more bouncy. It's a lot softer. So now if you have a Metcon coming up where you're actually gonna be doing a lot more running, box jumps, double unders, all of a sudden now you have a heavily cushioned shoe in the exact same shoe. Now it also goes to show you that it's okay to have more than one shoe for training. Also, you can have something more for casual. I play basketball, so now you have a basketball shoe and you have a training shoe that you can actually mix and match. Cool thing is, is you can actually take your Metcon midsole put it in your basketball shoes and all of a sudden you really do have a really good training shoe. Now something that I wish Nike would do is release a full lunar midsole that's meant for the Metcons. Now what I say by that is if you get the Kobe's, this is gonna raise the heel some so you do uh, have a little bit of lockdown issue or heel slippage, but overall if you're running it works now I have an older shoe called the Hyperfield train this guy has a lunar midsole that does have quite a bit of flexibility It is thinner, but if you notice these black parts, it's for stability 
So this is actually an incredible midsole. I ended up buying two pairs back in the day. These fit in the Metcons amazing. They're giving you a lot more cushion. And the biggest requests and questions I get from you out there is, uh, what's a training shoe that has more cushioning? Uh, the Nanos are not known for cushion. The Metcons can be uh, slightly less comfortable than maybe what you would like, especially if you're doing runs, jumps, double unders. Uh, having a little bit of cushion really does help. And as you lose weight, you actually tend to need less cushioning as well and most CrossFit gyms out there or boxes are using rubber floors so when you have that rubber floor that does help with some of the impact as well. So with all that being said, I know Nike is coming out with their DSX Flyknit 2. If you saw my video yesterday on the week releases, they are helping with that heel slippage. I am excited to see how the midsoles work with that one when they have that Achilles pillow and that sock-like fit. Uh, but I can encourage you guys, if you are not a Metcon fan, if you have Nanos, if you have Nobles, I will be doing a training video on all the different shoes. Uh, Metcon reviews are way are out there in, in full force. You guys can review and look at a lot of them. It's an awesome shoe. Uh, I don't like it just because it's necessarily better than every other training shoe. I like it because of the versatility and because of the other shoes I have that allow me to use that shoe from multiple different facets. So the shoe I keep in my gym bag, in my car at all times, is actually a Metcon and actually three different midsoles as far as the running, the one that comes with it, uh, as far as that being kind of a middle ground, and then finally, my older Metcon 1, just that it's been used and it's a lot denser, and it's something I can use for deadlifting where it's super stable. So, that being said, you guys have an idea what's in my bag. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, shoot me some questions, let me know if you have any links. I'll let you know what shoes work and don't work as far as using that midsole. Uh, Under Armour does have, I think, their Charge Ultimate that has a removable midsole. I'd love to pick up one of those on the cheap and let you guys know if that midsole works because that midsole is supposedly uh, very soft and comfortable obviously maybe not something you want for generally all wads but if you're doing a workout you need more cushioning it doesn't hurt to have an awesome shoe that you can adapt to guys hopefully that helps give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you're not following me you can follow sneaker gears on instagram on uh twitter on facebook look me up let me know what questions you guys have as always uh, i love bringing you guys uh, new information hopefully helping someone out there really appreciate you guys and i'll come at you soon